Hey guys, so you probably know by now, if you've been watching some of my previous videos, you know that my family and I are preparing our black seat, so I'll move back to the motherland. And one of the main reasons why we're going back to the motherland is because of business opportunities. So if this is of interest to you, I am going to share 10 business opportunities that you can have in Africa. There are actually more than 10, but this video is based on the 10 days that I've spent in Cote d'Ivoire, in Abidjan. And yes, there were business opportunities all over the place. So if this is of interest to you, make sure you like this video, share it with a friend and subscribe to this channel. That way you don't miss any of our video progress as we are preparing for our black seat to move to either Cameroon or Cote d'Ivoire next year. So if this is of interest to you again, make sure you like this video and watch our previous videos. If you don't even know why we are moving back to the motherland or anything like that, I'm going to link a video in the description sharing with you the 10 main reasons why we are leaving the US. So let's get into these 10 business opportunities. I have them here on the list. No particular order. I actually have a bonus one. I have 11 business opportunities for you. So these will apply to the continent all around Africa, but specifically to Abidjan because that's where I was. That's based on my experience there this past few week, a few weeks ago when I went for our scouting trip. So number one, because Cote d'Ivoire is a French speaking country, it's a francophone country, teaching English is booming. There are a lot of schools or yeah, schools that are teaching you English. And even within campuses, like university campuses, they have like um, workshops to teach English and things like that. So if you have some kind of business where you either do tutoring in English or you have a, a school in a way where you are teaching English to whether it's to CEOs who don't who don't speak English or to students, families or kids, even that is a booming business for you. So number one is teaching English. Number two, that one is a little, you're going to go against the trend for this one because all over the continent, there's a big trend for Ubers and Yangos. Oh, it's a little bug. For Ubers, Yangos, and you know, yeah, Uber cars, right? Just like here in, in the US. However, they are growing so fast that the, um, I feel like the growth of infrastructure, infrastructure development and everything is not growing as fast as the growth of um, cars on the streets. So that causes a big problem, big congestion problem, a lot of traffic and all of that. So the business idea that I have for you is to develop some kind of public trans transportation. I was going to say transformation, public transportation, to invest in public transportation. A lot, there are a lot of buses and all of that that are state run. So they're not always in the best shape. So there are some private companies as well that do transportation between towns within the country. But public transportation, not only it is good for the environment, but it's I, to me personally, I feel like it's even like a moral um, for a moral cause, cause because, yeah, it's just good. It's just better for the environment. And it's just the the infrastructures are not growing as the same speed as the number of cars on the street. A lot of young girls, a lot of cars are, they are pouring into the streets, but not enough public transportation. They are good, clean, secure, not polluting public transportation options that are reliable. Okay, so that would be a good business opportunity for you. Again, you're going against the trend of the Ubers and the Yangos and everything, but not only is it for a good cause, but it also makes sense economically, okay? So public transportation is number two. Number three, okay, all around the continent, the middle class is growing, okay? It's expanding. And specifically in Abidjan, you will see all kinds of food options, all kinds of restaurants, all kinds of cuisines, whether it's American cuisine, Lebanese cuisine, French cuisine, Indian cuisine, Thai cuisine, anything you want. So investing in a restaurant because people like novelty, because people like what is new and different and that is culturally diverse, specifically in Abidjan, that is a business opportunity that is golden for you, opening a restaurant. But here's the thing, it can't just be some kind of regular restaurant. People like novelty, like I just said, and people like things that are original and unique and different. So you have to come up with a concept that is interesting, highly Instagrammable, please, and that is just interesting and exciting and new 
um, and very original for your for your audience. Okay, so that would be number three, a restaurant. Number four, this is something that is highly needed all around the continent, but something that I've, that I've also uh, noticed in Abidjan is customer ser service training. I think that is a French thing. Like from a Francophone country, I mean, when you go to France, they're not super high on customer service. We all know that, okay? When you go into a store in France, it's not like in the US where they're like, how can I help you and all that. It's just, it's not in the manners. It's not in the manners, right? So having that in Abidjan as well, even though I, I felt like it was a lot more, more warm, warmer, I guess, than, um, than being in France and all of that. People are a lot more, um, you know, hospitable and everything. But having that training within the hospitality, the service industry is highly, highly in demand to have that in restaurants, to have that in bars, to have that in hotels. If you are trained in that, definitely on high demand, you will be able to to build a business around it and offer this kind of training to companies, to hotel staff and all of that, or to individuals if you want. Okay, so that was business number four, customer service training. Number five, this is something that I was uh, really looking forward to doing and to exploring when I was in Abidjan. And on purpose, before I went there, I went into a Facebook group and I asked people, okay, where can I find a co-working space in Abidjan? So I had a lot of answers and the high, different answers, right? Different co-working spaces in Abidjan. And the one that was mostly cited, mostly shared was a specific one. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to that one. It must be absolutely great, right? And, you know, I had my own preconceived notions about, you know, my own expectations, right? About a co-working space. But when I went there, I have to tell you, Bug, I have to tell you, I was, it was nice, right? It was nice, but it wasn't what I expected. I was a little underwhelmed. I was a little, um, I expected more. Basically, I expected more. It was a big room with us on the side, there was like the entrance with, you know, the reception area slash uh, kitchen. And then at the end, two little booths that were added at the end of the construction for the bathrooms. Uh, men and women. So it wasn't like there was a, a lounge area or a private booth area or a playing pool area or a kitchen, public kitchen kind of area. No, it wasn't that. It was a big room with a long table and everybody was just on the chair at the table. And then on the side, they were like, I think four little cubicles. Okay. That was it. That was the co-working space. Yes, the internet was fast. Yes, it was quiet. Yes, it was comfortable. Yes, it was clean and all of that. But I expected a little more from it, right? So investing in the co-working space, that's something that I personally would love to do. So co-working space slash training space, um, that is something that's in my heart. So if that's in your heart as well, if that's an opportunity you want to look into, definitely look into it. A co-working space because it didn't take much for these people to to put it together and it's you know and, it's, and it wasn't cheap it was nine thousand francs for the day i'm gonna put the conversion in the <laughs> in the description because i forget uh how much that is in the in us dollars i think it's about a little less than eight dollars i think i think ten thousand francs it's eight dollars eight us dollars but i might be wrong so if uh you know let me know in the comments right now if you know how much 9,000 francs is in US dollars. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's business number five, co-working space. Business number six, one thing you will see in every single corner in Abidjan and a lot of capitals around the continent is bakeries. Bakeries, we love the bread, we love, we love it all, right? We love all the goodies and everything. And so one thing that I was thinking that I didn't see that much is coffee shops. So there might be a cultural reason why, but now if you want, that goes in the same line as the restaurant and the innovation, something different and original. A bakery, so it's mainly a bakery, but it's also a coffee shop. So you're attracting your audience at, with the bakery element, but you're retaining your audience and in the coffee shop element. Basically, they can come here, not just to have some cakes and, and ice cream and all that, but they can come and work there. So 
if you do your marketing well you you, you can absolutely develop something like that so coffee shop because based on a bakery concept okay so that would be business number six something that i would love to explore as well i can do it all but that's something that i would love to do coffee shop slash bakery number seven obviously everybody's doing that is airbnb okay around the continent there are not enough hotels okay and I, when i that's a generality okay when i say around the continent but on average in abidjan specifically they are i think the number one destination in west africa francophone west africa for business tourism so they have a lot of conferences and things like that i talked about that in my previous video however they're trying to be more to receive more leisure tourists okay so to do that they have to build a lot more hotels all around town all around the country more hotels to attract people who are not here for business just to sit in conference rooms but people who want to lounge by the pool who people who want to go and uh, on tours who want to visit places go to museums and things like that so having the infrastructure is necessary so whether you want to invest in a hotel which the investment is going to be a lot higher or simply an airbnb through apartments that you can buy refurbish and things like that side note the african uh, cup of nation is coming to Abidjan in January 2024. So, I mean, soccer is huge. Number one sport around the world. So there's going to be a lot of people coming in. If there aren't enough hotel rooms by then, the option of uh, apartments, Airbnbs is going to be really, really on high demand. So if you want to prepare, this is, this is your hint. Airbnb is going to be great. It's already huge right now but it's going to be even a uh, higher demand by January, 2024. Okay. So Airbnb was number seven, number eight. That's something that I noticed as well, even though Abidjan is a very green city. Okay. And a lot of capitals are very, very green. There weren't a lot of green spaces within neighborhoods, green spaces for again, leisure for the kids. So playgrounds, parks, and things like that. I didn't see any, I didn't see any actually. Uh, I saw a lot of, I mean, a lot, I saw a few indoor spaces, like, you know, it's like a play area, like they have a bouncy, you know, those play, I don't know how you call those, like play care, I guess, when you go it's indoors and then you have the bouncy house and all of these things for kids indoors, but not outdoor playgrounds in the neighborhoods. I didn't see that. Now, here's the thing. How do you make money with public parks? Well, you but you count on add-ons so it's not so much the park itself so the park itself is to attract the kids but what you're going to have there for them once they are there is the food trucks the ice cream trucks the all the kinds of snacks that you can have around the park or inside the park that will keep the kids coming over and over again so yes you can you can create a public play, playground green space with just swings and things like that you know regular playground but having something like a food truck equivalent, uh, ice cream trucks, things like that, that's where the money is going to be coming from, okay? So that was number eight, playgrounds and parks. Number nine, this is big, it's not new at all, everything that has to do with beauty. So hair, makeup, jewelry, anything like that. You know, women love that all around the world in general, okay? So any business that is centered around that, either doing natural hair, doing wigs, doing lashes, doing nails, all kind of anything that is, has to do with beauty, that's a good investment as well. Number 10, this one was something that I saw online as well as when I was in Abidjan, and it's also popular in other countries around the continent, is selling American products, okay? These could range from uh, lotion, to anything like deodorant i had some friends who ordered some tom's deodorants makeup uh for me to bring because it wasn't available so certain brands that they would want or even things like um chips yes like doritos because or oreos they do have them in supermarkets but here's the thing the supermarket um 
brands chains there are French, right? And in the French market, which basically every anywhere outside of the US, most of the Russians are smaller than US Russians. US Russians are just bigger. The bag of chip, you will never see a bag of chip that's smaller than this on the regular shelves because we like big, big bag of chips, right? And that's why we are all overweight. Anyways, side note. But American products, whether it's a deodorant, whether it's a sh bottle of shampoo, whether it's a um, toothpaste, whether it's a bag of chips, anything, the sizes are a lot bigger than European sizes. So, and the thing is that the price is not that different, okay? Sometimes it could be cheaper. I was comparing the price of cereal, the Kellogg cereal, and I'm gonna put the price in somewhere in the screen or in the description. It was the smallest size of Kellogg cereal. I think it was Fruit Loops. And the smallest size, which was the regular size in Abidjan, the supermarket, I think it was Casino or Carrefour uh, supermarket, French brand, right? And it was, <clears throat> so it was the regular size, but it's the equivalent to the smallest size in the US. And it was more expensive there than our smallest size, okay? So now there's an opportunity for you here to sell the biggest size at the same price as their regular size or just a little more because it's a bigger quantity. So it makes sense to charge more, right? But even at the beginning, you can even introduce it as, hey, it's gonna be the same price just to attract the market to say, hey, you want it at this size, small size, or this big size at the same price. I mean, everybody's gonna go with the big size because it just makes sense. If you're feeding your family, you want a bigger size. I was looking at the at the um yeah I was just looking at the the bag of chips and everything and I was like man my kids would eat this thing in one setting and that's it or even the cereal that small size is not gonna last a week in my house so if I have to pay that same amount of money every single week it adds up really 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 fast so side note if you're moving to the to the motherland that's something you definitely want to bring with you if you. If you wanted to bring something like that for your kids, for your family, put it in your suitcase because it's a lot more expensive over there. Bag of Oreos. They were tiny little bag of Oreos like this. That's regular size around the world. But in the U.S., you're not going to sell something like this on the shelves. Something like that is going to be by the cashier. The little miniature size, sample size, right? In the main aisles, it's going to be the big rack of oreos right so imagine same price or just a little more expensive than the regular price of the tiny little box right it makes financial sense to sell the american products <clears throat> that are a lot bigger in size and you can even add a little more in terms of pricing okay so that was number 10 selling u.s products from food products to beauty products it will it will work there are stores that actually special specialize in selling uh american products like victoria's secret body sprays and lotions and all that i actually myself brought a whole suitcase of <laughs> of some of those and i'm selling them uh over there so it really works okay number 11 this is a bonus one this is for you if you want to go into the uh, tourism hospitality niche is a travel agency. There are a lot of travel agencies in uh, in the continent, in Africa, in Abidjan. But if you want to cater to a specific market, maybe it's the American market, maybe it's the French market, maybe it's a specific niche like heritage, tourism, or whatever it is that you want to look at, be very niche because a lot of people are generalists and then the competition is really higher. But if you're very specific on what you want, and again, that goes back to Point number one, speaking English. If you are an agency that caters to, let's say, English-speaking tourists, all around uh, French-speaking, like francophone countries in the continent, this is going to work really, really, really well. Okay, so that was bonus tip, bonus uh, business opportunity in Africa and specifically in Abidjan based on my own observations. There are more business opportunities that you can look into from real estate to agriculture, but I didn't I, those are not even the ones that, those are more like obvious choices, right? 
But these are the 10 ones that really popped up to me and I was like, oh man, business opportunity, business opportunity, business opportunity. I'm not gonna go into all of them. I have my preferences. But now, based on this 11 potential business businesses, which one or which ones would you go into? Would it be teaching English? That sounds like an easy one. You already have the skills. You're already fluent in English. Would it be a restaurant, maybe a coffee shop? The co-working space, like I said, it was really simple. A big room with a big table, that's it. And toilets and a mini kitchen, that's all. Or is it in hair, in beauty, or selling American goods? Which option would you pick? I have my choices already. I've shared a few, a few with you, my preferences. Now, tell me your preferences. Let me know in the comments. I would love to know more about that. In the meantime, make sure you like this video, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, and look around. There are more, top, more videos where I share more about the reasons why we are moving to Africa and the things that are, you know, the, the surprises that I've faced when we went there on our visit with my husband. So if that's of interest to you, again, make sure you look around the channel and watch more videos. Until next time, bye-bye.